Just as the good people at Marvel Studios have taught us to think of long-term projects that build, grow, and shift in phases, I'd like to officially welcome you to High School for Hope, Phase 2. Why Phase 2, you may ask? Or more poignantly, some may ask, what exactly was Phase 1? And even more specifically, you suddenly say, wait a minute, what happened last year? We started Lent, then got sent home. What happened to the kids? These are great questions. And so as we embark upon another Lenten journey of prayer, fasting, and charitable giving, let us look back at the past, celebrate the present situation, and look to the future within the story of High Schools for Hope. So let's take a look at High School for Hope in phases. Phase 1 is a bit of a trilogy on its own, or a trinity of moments for Christian wordplay. Starting in 2010 to 2013, the curtain opened on Part 1 of Phase 1 to student voices telling the high school chaplains that while high school rivalries can be kind of fun, it is also really important that we rally together through our shared faith. Easter is the apex of our faith, and Lent, 40 days of preparation, would be a great time for a unified project of prayer, fasting, and charity. But what could we reasonably accomplish together? Our high schools do a great job supporting local charities throughout the year, but Lent tends to be a time schools use for international projects. So why not a single international charitable project together? Enter the Canadian Catholic International Aid Organization, Chalice. Working in 16 countries, Chalice is centered on child sponsorship, one of the most effective forms of international aid. Beyond sponsorship, Chalice supports community development, infrastructure aid, vocational training, and more. Student leaders loved the idea of sponsoring a group of children over time, a bit of a legacy project of sorts. By starting in the 2010-2011 year, the start of a decade, we could look at it as a 10-year project. Start with a group of 8-year-olds and sponsor them through to age 18. We wanted to help raise a village within the community. But how many kids could we commit to? After discussion and a lot of prayer, we decided on the number, 20 kids. This meant an annual commitment of $8,000, a total the high school leaders felt comfortable with for an annual goal. Plus, any extra funds could support the community. We had a basic plan. Next, where to focus. Then it happened. January 12th, 2010. One of the poorest nations in the world, and home to Chalice Projects, had a devastating earthquake. That nation? Haiti. Students in all the high schools began to ask teachers, can we do something to help? The answer? Yes! So, as each school did their own land projects in 2009-2010, a foundation was built to come together the following year. It was... High Schools for Haiti, the first part of Phase 1. Lent 2010-2011, each school was introduced to the project, drawn in as the names, the faces, and the stories of our first 20 children flowed. The kids were not all 8-year-olds as initially planned, but we didn't mind. We'd figure it out as we went, and, well, the younger ones were extra cute anyways. There was Katya, she was 8. Wismay Sun, Posterly, and Deluxon, they were all seven. Jiverly, Flint, two Mackendies, Mackendie Pierre and Mackendie Thomas, along with Remy, Wangler, Adeline, Woodcall, Maiderly, and Wendy. They were all six. Then there was the group of extra cute five year olds, including Fabiana, Sodlin, Goodchilly, Jivenson, Emmanuel, and a stand. Our high school communities, including St. Luke, Laboldus, Miller, O'Neill, and Riffle, phew, we just fell in love, and diverse fundraising activities ensued. We were overwhelmed by the first three years, a uh, trinity of years, in the opening part of Phase 1. 2010-11, Year 1, as a collective group of high schools for Haiti, we raised over $31,000 blowing past the 8000 we needed for sponsorship. The next year, over $33,000. And in 2012-13, we went even further, topping the $40,000 mark. 
it was a three-year total that exceeded $105,000. Needless to say, we did a lot more than sponsor those 20 kids for three years. Take a look at all the different highlights. A cafeteria, school buildings repaired, a deep water well being dug that, that's accessed by thousands of people daily. We consulted with the local leaders and put together projects with grants for supplies, bicycles, agriculture projects. There was even an incredible display of generosity by one individual from Riffle who stepped forward to pay $3,000 for a life-saving and life-changing surgery for McKendy Thomas. But on to part two of phase one. Five years spanning 2013 to 2018. It started in a similar fashion. A natural disaster grabbed our attention. That was on November 8th of 2013. Typhoon Haiyan made landfall in the Philippines with devastating effect. This was three months prior to Lent, and the opportunity to expand our project was here. Chalice operated in one of the poorest areas of the Philippines, the Tondo District of Manila. Students and staff were asking once again, can we help? And the answer, by the grace of God flowing through the generous hearts and hands of our community, was an emphatic yes. High Schools for Haiti would be rebranded as High Schools for Hope. Twenty new child sponsors from the Philippines were added. At this point, our Haitian children ranged in age from 8 to 11. The children from the Philippines were a little younger, adding to a, yeah, ain't they cute factor. Ten eight-year-olds, including Alexa, Erickson, Freddie, Genesis, Jasmine, Melka, Michaela, Ray, Rose, and Joy joined the group. There were also ten seven-year-olds, Sandra May, Alex, Christian, Hans Honeylin, James, Jamel, Junel, Carl, Nelvin, and Sheila May. While we have been fortunate to always have been connected to the same 20 children from Haiti, it is worth noting that some sponsors from the Philippines would change over time due to moves or improvements in life, but we continued to maintain our number at 40 total children. 2013-14, our first year with 40 children, High Schools for Hope raised over $34,000. The next year was our best year ever. We talked. 46,000. In 1516, we raised 40,000 again, followed by 38,000 in 2016 17, before settling back down to a still wonderful $29,000 plus in the 2017 18 school year. Each year, an initial 16,000 was allocated to the sponsorship of 40 children. Then, plans were made to spend the additional funds through Chalice Grants to the site, as we had done every year previous. Over this five-year period, or step two of phase one, a dental clinic and a community vocation center were established in Tondo in the Philippines. Meanwhile, in Haiti, change came in the form of the purchase of land for each family and financial aid to support them in the process of building their own brick house. This slow but incredible process had huge impact on the community. All aspects were done through the local community. It's noteworthy that during this five year period, or part two of phase one, High Schools for Hope raised a combined 188,000 plus. Our eight year total within phase one as a whole was now over $293,000. Part 3 of Phase 1 has occurred over the last two years, 2018-2019 and 2019-2020. It started as we asked, what next? The original 10-year project vision was concluding in Easter of 2020. Plans for Phase 2 began, and oh yeah, we had another great year in 2018-2019, raising $24,849. Children were sponsored and more community grants given. Phase 2 would see us slowly shifting away from Chalice. This would involve three steps. Step 1. If a current child sponsor left the program, we would no longer add another. This decision has seen 8 of our 40 children leave sponsorship due to family moves and improvements in their overall life. In 2019, Mark, Genesis, Freddie, Nelvin, Alexa, and Jasmine moved on from sponsorship. 
We are grateful for our time with them and pray they are making positive impacts on their communities. Then, in 2020, the first two of our 20 Haitian children left sponsorship. Adeline and Estand moved on. We pray for these two as well. Step two of moving into phase two involved organizing all of our remaining children by age. You may recall the intention was to support the children through to their 18th birthday. This plan would now become a key piece of closing phase one and starting phase two. We would carry forward sponsoring children until they turned 18. But we wouldn't just stop sponsorship and walk away. <laughs> no, we needed a plan. And that plan involved our own broader community. Each year in phase two, we would identify any children turning 18. High Schools for Hope would sponsor this child one last time while seeking a new sponsor from within our community. In 2019-2020, we tested it out. The last year of Phase 1, we had one child turning 18, Katya, and quickly a group of six graduating students from one of the high schools asked to take over the sponsorship. All old pictures and letters from Katya were given to the group and now that group will sponsor Katya for the first time this year and for as long as they choose to. Basically, step two allows for High Schools for Hope to fulfill our original intention of sponsorship through to age 18 and then create a bridge to a new sponsor for the child. Maybe one of you. We could be transitioning sponsors out of High Schools for Hope from now through to Easter of 2027. These years of transition are the core of Phase 2. Step 3 involves the money question. What about money raised beyond what is needed for sponsorship? All through Phase 1, 2010 to 2020, any money beyond what was needed for sponsorship went to support the communities and families of the sponsors through grant programs administered by Chalice. Phase 2 will see this change. Money raised beyond what is needed for the Chalice sponsorships will now be directed through the Archdiocese of Regina's Cuernavaca Project in Mexico. This project has a long and proud history spanning 30 years, and now we will be able to enter into that story. You will be hearing more and more about this project throughout Phase 2 and its successes in the development of initiatives in health, education, economic opportunity, and more. Initial funds donated to the project by the High Schools for Hope group will be used to build up a self-sustaining aspect to the education side of this project. <clears throat> Uh, thanks for all the info. This is fantastic. But some of you are now asking, What the heck happened in 2020? You know, it, it began like every other year in Phase 1. We were ready for our three-step transition plan. It was explained on Ash Wednesday. That was February 26th of 2020. We already had people in place willing to take over the sponsorship of Katja. She was our first 18-year-old sponsor. Donations had started with things like a Shrove Tuesday pancake meal, Ash Wednesday collections, and continued on with some early events through all of the schools. We had goals set to raise funds to re-sponsor 32 remaining children, with the idea of any additional funds going to Chalice Grants for the very last time. Phase 1 was about to finish with a flourish, and it did, just not the way we expected. By early March, news of COVID was becoming very serious, and by March the 19th, students and staff had been sent home. Fundraising had stalled. Each school had had levels of success to start, and, and funds were pooled, but we were nowhere near what we needed. What to do? Ideas were discussed. Chalice was told not to expect any grants this year. It would simply become our goal to sponsor the 32 children once again, if we could. Then, tragedy struck, we received news that one of our child sponsors in the Philippines, Rika Subida, who suffered from a chronic respiratory and health condition, had died in her sleep. She was only 14 years old. Those that knew of her passing prayed for her. And now that we all know, I ask that we all pause in silent prayer for the soul of Rika Subida and her family who mourn her passing to her heavenly home.
tragedy and worries overwhelmed us. How could we find a way to ensure that all of the 31 remaining children would be sponsored? We wondered what if we asked any staff members if they might be willing to take over the sponsorship of a child. This would release the High Schools for Hope group from the financial commitment to that child, while at the same time ensure that sponsorship continued. This initial ask snowballed. Multiple staff members stepped forward at the schools to take over as a sponsor. But also, there were many who just simply said, Hey, can I make a big donation? It was fantastic. Over the course of three weeks, 11 of the 31 children found themselves with new sponsors for the future, while the extra donations came in at the same time. We are deeply thankful to those who made donations, and especially to those staff members at Miller, Leboldus, Riffle, and O'Neill, including the Interact Club, who have become sponsors to Flint, Remy, Mackenzie Thomas, Katya, Fabiana, Emmanuel, Hans Honeylin, Lovely, Christian, Kristal, and Sheila May. May your relationships with these 11 children be fruitful and long-lasting. The High Schools for Hope group was now left with 20 children to sponsor. And through the generosity of those that donated in the schools prior to March 19th, as well as the staff who donated during the time after March 19th, we ended the Lenten season with a total of almost $15,000. It was incredible. It even allowed us, one last time, to offer grant money, almost $6,000 worth. And that money has largely been used for emergency relief due to the pandemic. What a conclusion to Phase 1 of High Schools for Hope. And so, here we are. Officially, in Phase 2. 20 children we would like to sponsor once again. 12 children who have been with us since 2010 from Haiti, including Wismay Son, Poster Lee, Delek Son, Jeverly, Mackenzie P, Wangler, Wood Carl, Mater Lee, Wendy, Sodlin, Ruchili, and Jevinson. 8 children from the Philippines, including Erickson, Ren, Sandra May, James Andrew, John, Haleli, and Jomalin. From this group, we are giving a special emphasis to our 18-year-olds in Haiti, Wismay Son, Posterly, and Delek Son. We hope to find new sponsors for these three boys. High Schools for Hope will pay for this year, but we would turn the files over to you and help you set up your contact information with Chalice. You would receive any further correspondence, report cards, pictures, seasonal wishes, or updates. Then, in June of 2022, you, as the new sponsor, would begin making sponsorship payments for as long as you would like. Please pray about this as an option for you, your family, or a group of friends to take on. Interested people can speak with your school chaplain. New sponsors will be based on first come, first serve. Cost of a sponsorship, which supports nutrition, medical assistance, education, clothing, and key supplies, is $444 for a 12-month period. With 20 children to sponsor this year, the High Schools for Hope group will need to fundraise a total of $8,880. As a part of High Schools for Hope, let's do our part within our school to help achieve this goal. And what about extra money? Well, as your parents would say, there's no such thing. But what will we do with any funds in excess of the $8,880 needed to re-sponsor the 20 children through Chalice? Well, it's now Phase 2, and that means those funds will be donated to the Cornavica Project in Mexico to the Archdiocese of Regina. The funds will specifically be put to use in building up an education program. And so there we are! That's the story! Some of the story you knew, some maybe you didn't know. But regardless, you are part of the story. We ask that you share the story and that you pray for those we can support. May your prayers not only reach the children we sponsor, but may they affect you. May your heart be open by your prayers, that your spirit will be willing, willing to act, willing to speak up, willing to donate generously, and to pray again to keep that cycle going. God bless us all. Welcome into, or back into, the story of High Schools for Hope, Phase 2.